Now, as with most things, with Jesus, there is a few characteristics that are just absolutely crucial. <laughs> For example, how many know who Derek is? You saw him up here, right? Hey, Derek. Now, if I said, I know Derek, right? He's very talented. He's got a good singing voice. Plays tiny guitars. Does gymnastics. Good with kids. And six foot three. How many would say I'm not talking about the same Derek? <laughs> Why? Because he absolutely is not six foot three. What are we talking about Bob? Bob, right? Bob, AC, heating, professional, very talented with his hands, very smart, good teacher of the Word of God, and that Irish accent is just amazing, right? Being from Ireland the way he is, it's just so clear and so wonderful to listen to him talk. How many would say I'm talking about the wrong person? He does not. <laughs> he has a very southern accent. <laughs> right? So there are certain characteristics where you just say, okay, if that one's not there, if that one's wrong, then I'm not talking about the right person, right? You must be talking about somebody else. Well, this one is the crucial, crucial, the crucial characteristic of Jesus Christ. If you don't believe this one, you're not talking about Jesus. If you, if you don't believe this one, then you're not talking about the one who died for our sins and will come again and reign over the earth. If you don't get this one right, because a lot of other religions have picked up on Jesus. Have you noticed that? And do the Muslims talk about Jesus? Yes. A prophet, a sinless prophet, a great man, a great teacher. By the way, is he all those things? Absolutely. Do the Mormons talk about Jesus? Oh, yeah, great man, great teacher, wonderful things, great prophet of God. But what do both those groups then say? But he ain't who? But he's not God. Mormons say he's just the brother of Lucifer, one of the many, many children of God the Father. Not Jesus. Not our Savior. Not the true Jesus, is it? What do the Muslims say? Again, just a prophet. A prophet like who? Like Moses, like Muhammad. Great prophet, great understanding, but not what? But not God, right? who actually didn't actually die on the cross for our sins, flipped out with somebody, switched with somebody somewhere along the way. <laughs> so not the same Jesus. Do we need to know the real Jesus? Do we need to worship the true Jesus? Yes, and we're going to see why. This is such an important because Jesus is God. Everybody say it with me. Jesus is God. Now, a lot of people, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought there was only one God. I thought I had a little uncomfortable calling him God and things like that. But we're going to see today, there is no way around it. There is no other way to see the scriptures except to know that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. And we're going to start with some testimonies, all right? Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. So let's go first a little Old Testament. Who is coming? Isaiah is all about the coming Christ. <laughs> the one who is coming, the one who's going to save Israel. Israel at this point in their history is doing a terrible, terrible job. Yes, they're doing the sacrifices and the all the festivals and all the feasts, and they're being very, very religious. But the book of Isaiah starts out with God saying, knock it off. <laughs> Just stop bringing the sacrifice, stop bringing this up, because you don't know me. Again, you've created this idea of me. You've created this character of me, but you do not worship me, your God, right? Which, as we did a nice little study not long back, that showed that the time of Isaiah is just like the time of Jesus. Same thing. Were they doing all the sacrifices? Yes. Were they doing all the things they're supposed to? Yes. But when Jesus came along, they said, no, you're not. Right? And what did Isaiah say the Christ would come would be? Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name, what? Emmanuel. Well, like we just talked about, names are important, aren't they? What does Emmanuel mean? You know what Emmanuel means? God with us. <laughs> so who's coming? God. God the Father is going to send through a virgin a son who is God with us. 
say, well, you can read that a different way. That means God for us, God on our side. Well, let's keep going then. Let's keep going. Chapter 40, verse 3. Chapter 40, verse 3, talking about the one who is going to come before the Christ. We know his name to be what? John the Baptist. By the way, both of these verses are quoted in the New Testament, and they were sure that these are about Jesus. And it says here in chapter 40, verse 3, The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our who? God. This is quoted in the New Testament by who? John the Baptist. He says, I am the one. I am preparing the way. Who is he preparing the way for? That word Lord there, anybody know what it is in Hebrew? Yahweh. <laughs> Yehovah. That is, they would even do Yahweh because they didn't want to accidentally say the name of the one true creator God of all things, Right? That's that Lord. So is Isaiah just kind of throwing that away as he's going to be a Lord? He's going to be a guy, a prophet, a good man? No, he says he's going to be what? Lord Jehovah, Yahweh, God of all things, to prepare the way for our what? God. And John the Baptist said the same thing. I'm that guy. And he's the one that sat there and pointed to Jesus and said, Behold, who? The Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world. He's the one that I'm preparing the way for. He is then who? According to Isaiah. Yahweh, God. All right? That's just one guy, though, right? <laughs> Do we trust Isaiah here? Isaiah got everything else right. Let's see a few others, though. How about John the Disciple? Let's go to John chapter 1. Uh, we did this as part of our responsive reading. But John chapter 1. Now, just know something a little about John. John probably knew Jesus better than anybody. He's part of that inner circle of his brother James, him, John, and Peter. Right? They're the ones that got to spend, they got to be a transfiguration, they got to be a special things. They went and prayed with him the night in which he was arrested, went into the deeper part of the of the of the garden. You know, they were very clear. He's the one that leaned on him during the Last Supper. He's the one that was beloved. It says that he's the beloved one. He he also lived longer than all the rest of them. Unfortunately, what he lived to see is the church already questioning whether Jesus is God. In his lifetime. They already started saying, well, yeah, Jesus was a good teacher and everything, but not God. So what did the Holy Spirit tell him to do? Write this book. <laughs> Write this book right here. And how does he start it? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was who? God. Well, who's this Word? Jump down to verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten the Father, full of grace and truth. The word is Jesus. Therefore, Jesus is what? With God and was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Jesus, and without Jesus was not anything made that was made. So who does John believe he is? God the Creator, right? That's who He is. In fact, what did John the Baptist himself say? Go to John chapter 1, verse 30. John the Baptist here talking about Jesus. This is He, Jesus is He, of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was what? Before me. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> we know their history, don't we? We know that John the Baptist was born six months before Jesus. So how can he say that Jesus was before him? Because he knows he's who? <laughs> that he's God. In fact, keep going. And I knew him not, but he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I am... 
come baptizing with water. And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him, Jesus. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I saw and bear record that this is who? The Son of God. And by the way, whenever they say this is the Son of God, every Jew knew what they were saying. Not a Son of God. We are the children of God, right? We are sons and daughters of God. But when he says the Son of God, who are they talking about? One who is equal with God. One who is like God. One who is who? God. He bare record. He's before me because I know that he is God. So we got three witnesses. Want one more? How about two more? Let's keep going. John chapter 8, verse 68. Isn't it nice having everything in the book of John? You just kind of roll around here. John chapter 8, verse 68. That's wrong. Go to 6. My handwriting is getting worse and worse over the years. Anybody notice that? used to be able to understand things. There you go. John chapter 6, verse 68. And this is after the feeding of the 5,000, right? And he started talking about, you must consume, my, I'm the bread of life, right? You must consume it, you must receive me in order to have life. We remember studying that, right? And all the people said, this is too hard. <laughs> We're leaving. <laughs> we, we don't get it. We don't understand. And then he turned to his own disciples and said, are you going to go away too? Peter, James, John? Judas, are you guys going to go away? Then Simon Peter answered Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art Christ. We studied that, right? He is the Christ. He is also what? The Son of the living God. Again, not a son, but what? The Son of the living God. He meant it. When he called him Lord, he was saying who? God. The Son of God. We know who you are. You want an even better testimony than that? It's actually going to come from Thomas. Doubting Thomas, John chapter 20. We all know Thomas for the dumb things he said. Let's give him a little credit here. <laughs> See, Thomas was one of the 12 disciples, but he was not there when Jesus rose from the dead and came and met with the 10 other disciples. So he came into the room and had time with the ten disciples. And when Thomas got back from wherever errand he was running, they all said, we saw Jesus. And he said what? I will not believe that he is risen from the dead until I stick my fingers in the holes in his hands and my hand in the hole in his side. That's why we call him what? Doubting Thomas, right? Does Jesus come to him? Eight days later, <laughs> he comes to all 11 of them. They're together. And look what Thomas says in verses 28 and 29. And Thomas answered and said unto Jesus, My Lord and my God. <laughs> are you kidding me? Does he finally get it? You are my Lord and my what? God. Isn't that an amazing statement? Look at what Jesus says next. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have what? Believed. Believed what? That he is our Lord and our what? God. Pretty good testimony, right? Prophecy said, God's coming. Right? Those who knew him best said, he's the one. He's the Son of God. He's Lord. He's God. Those who finally figured it out, understood that he is who? God. But this is testimony of what? Men, right? Can you trust them? Ladies? Can you trust the men? <laughs> These are moved by the Holy Spirit, so they're okay. All right? <laughs> but the question always comes up, yeah, sure, okay. A bunch of guys says he's God. Bible, some places say he's God. But did Jesus, Jesus never said he was God. That is always one of the most amazing statements to me. Because I want you to look at your paper real quick. Did Jesus ever say it? It says John chapters 4, 15, and 18. There are 21 chapters in the book of John. 
Chapters 4, 15, and 18 are the only chapters where it is not declared unequivocally that Jesus is God. <laughs> 4 is the woman at the well. <laughs> 15 is him just talking to his disciples about the vine and things like that. And 18 is when he's on trial, which is kind of funny because in Matthew it tells us about the trial where he claimed he is who? God. So he just doesn't say it here. Only three chapters in the entire book where he or somebody else doesn't unequivocally say, this is God. So is it kind of important to think he is? But did Jesus ever say it? Let's go look. Let's go to John chapter 3 first. And he's going to say it several ways. John chapter 3, we're going to start in verse 13. Now this is Jesus talking to Nicodemus, a, a Pharisee, right? By the way, this Pharisee, should he know that the Christ is coming? Has he read Isaiah? Should he know that that Christ is going to be God? Yeah, that's what Isaiah said, right? And look what he says. And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? eternal life. So he, he likens it to an episode in the Old Testament where people were being bad, so God sent a bunch of poisonous snakes just popping up out of the desert to kill everybody. But had Moses make a brass serpent, stick it up, and if you looked at the serpent, the poison didn't kill you, right? And he's leading them back to that and said, just like that, the Son of Man, who's he talking about? Who is going to be lifted up off the ground to save the world from their sins? Jesus. What else does he say about that Son of Man? That he has descended down from where? He keeps saying this. Came down from where? Heaven. This is a statement that he makes over and over and over again. What does he mean by that? He means what? Literally. That was my home. And I came down. Now, I know this being Mother's Day and everybody, everybody likes this idea that up in heaven there's all these little baby souls and all the souls are up there. And then when a man and woman love each other enough, God blesses them with a little soul that comes down from heaven. Everybody knows that's not the way it works, right? <laughs> we didn't come from heaven. That wasn't our home before we got here. That was not our home. He's saying, I am the one who comes down from where? From heaven, because I'm not like you. In fact, let's go to chapter 8, verse 38. John chapter 8, verse 38 to 42. And he's having a fight with the Jews again. <laughs> the, the leadership keeps coming at him. Who are you? What are, what are you here for? We, we need proof that you are who you say you are. And he says this, starting in verse 38. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen from your father. They answered and said to them, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham, but now you seek to kill me. A man that hath told you the truth which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Right? God is our father. And Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I, what? Proceeded forth and came from who? God. Neither came I of myself, but he, what? Sent me. This is a huge statement. <laughs> I proceeded forth. That word in particular, you know what that means? That means I was there and now I'm here. <laughs> it's not like, oh, I came in that he sent me, right? Doesn't the Bible always say that? God sent me. God sent me here. I'm sent of God. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a missionary of God. God sent me. You could, you could say that I came from God, just that he sent me. That, that word proceeded from? That means I resided there and now I live here. <laughs> I proceeded forth from God. So what's he saying? I am who? He's either an angel or he's God. One of the two. <laughs> right? But let's keep going. Chapter 6, verse 38.
John chapter 6, verse 38. And again, this is the midst of the argument after the feeding of the 5,000 about him being the bread of life and all of that. And he says, For I came down from where? Heaven. Not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up the last day. Again, he starts with what? I came down from where? Heaven. Now, does the Jews understand what he was saying? Then the Jews then murmured at him. I don't know what murmuring at somebody means. It looks like because he said I am the bread which came down from heaven it wasn't just that he was saying I'm the bread of life it was that I'm the bread who came down from where it's like how's that possible we all come we know where we come from (laughs) we come from here what are you talking about coming down from heaven And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I come down from heaven? See, they got got the point. What do you mean? We we know your mom and dad. You came from Nazareth, right? Born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth. We know where you come from. And he said, No, that's not where I come from. I was before that. I was where? I was in heaven because I am God. And I came down for you. In fact, look at verse 62. This is what caps it off. He's like, are you offended by all these things I'm talking about? He says, what and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? (laughs) And by the way, where did Jesus go after he died? He rose back up to where? Heaven, to sit at the right hand of the Father, which is where he was before. Before what? Before he came here. (laughs) Because he's who? He is God. He says, I am from heaven. I am from above. You are from below. I am different from you. I am not just a man. I am what? I am God. Come down from heaven, Emmanuel. All right. Whew. That was a good one. You wanted a better one? Let's go to chapter 5, verse 17. What else would he say? Chapter 5, starting in verse 17. And again, he's arguing. Who are you? Why are you here? What are you doing? All those kinds of things. But Jesus answered them, My father works, hitherto I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself what? Equal with God. So I want you, if you could go through and count how many times Jesus said, I am the Son of God, or somebody else called him the Son of God, what were they saying every single time? I am equal with God. Therefore, what were they going to do to him? Kill him. (laughs) That's the only response to that. That's blasphemy. Now, is it blasphemy if I claim to be God? So if I claim to be the Son of God, you could just take up stones and kill me, right? Don't do it, no. We're under grace, not under the law. It's good. But, <laughs> but, but if Jesus says it, is that a little more important? Because then he says what? Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. For what things soever he does, these also does the Son likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that they may marvel. For as the Father raises up the dead and quickens them, even so the Son quickens whom he will. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the who? The Son. He, you know his answer to them? You claiming to be equal with God? The answer is absolutely. <laughs> I am equal with the Father. I can do whatever the Father does. I can say whatever the Father says. I can do anything the Father can do because I am equal with God. In fact, I am equal in glory to the Father. That's what he said. So he's got to be who? Crazy or God? <laughs> it's, it's one of the two, right? In fact, jump to chapter 10.
John chapter 10, starting in verse 30. Here's a cool statement. I and my Father are one. <laughs> so in case nobody picked it up before, when I say that God is my Father and I am the Son of God, I am claiming to be equal with who? God. I am one. So what did they do? Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. <laughs> they knew exactly what he was saying. He's saying, I am who? I am God. And what was Jesus' answer? Jesus answered, Many good works have I showed you for my Father. For which of those do you stone me? I've proven over and over again. I healed the blind man. I stopped the sea. I fed 5,000. I've healed them. I've healed them. I've done everything. I've raised the dead. So I've proven I'm one with the Father. So why are you, why are you, why are you bothering me? Right? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. So let me ask you something. Did Jesus ever claim to be God? Yeah. Yeah, he did. So the question is, can you ever just say, oh, Jesus was a good man, but he's not God? Because he, if he's not God, he's not a good man, is he? Because he just committed what? Blasphemy. <laughs> and everybody heard it and everybody saw it, right? So he is, says, I am equal with God. How about John chapter 8, verse 53? He's arguing with them again. That's what the book of John is basically all about. <laughs> people, people arguing with Jesus about who he is. And what's Jesus' answer every time? I'm God. In fact, the people question him and say, Are you greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Who do you think you are? Are you better than Abraham? Are you better than Isaiah? Are you better than Jeremiah? Are you better than those guys? Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. If I'm just saying this, if I've got no proof, if I've got nothing behind it, if I'm not really God, then yeah, you should just throw me away, right? It is my Father that honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. But you have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar unto you. <laughs> if I say I'm not God, if I say I don't know the God, if, you, if I say I didn't come down from him, I'd be a liar. But I know him, and keep his saying, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? How long had Abraham been dead by this point? <laughs> uh, thousands of years. How did Jesus know what Abraham liked and believed? And Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Why are they picking up stones to kill him again? Because he said, I what? I am. I am is an Old Testament name for who? God. When Moses was going to the people, what do I, what, who do I say is sending me? <laughs> Who do I say is sending me to get you free? Just say, I am sent me. I am is the great statement of who God is. He's eternal. He always has, always is, and always will be. His existence, his, his greatness, his intelligence, his wisdom is, is. Therefore, he is the what? I am. And what did just Jesus just call himself? I am. In other words, I am who? I am God. So they picked up stones again to kill him. Did they get it? Did Jesus ever say he's God? <laughs> How many ways has he said it so far? Three different ways he's said it. Are they getting it? Yes, they are. That's why they keep trying to kill him. Let's keep going. John chapter 9, verse 35. This is after he uh, healed a blind man. A, a guy who had been blind from birth. We went through this when we looked at the, the fact that he's the light of the world, right? Now something very important happens at the end of the story. Remember, they took the blind man who could now see and they cast him out of the temple and said, you can't come back here anymore because you're claiming this Christ could do these things that only God can do. Think about that for a minute. Okay. <laughs> and so Jesus goes to him and finds him. 
Let's pick up the story in verse 35. And Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when they found him, he said unto them, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? What is he claiming to be again? The Son of God. And he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said to them, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he, what? Worshipped him. This is a big red flag. In the book of John. Over and over again it says that. People bowed down to him. People worshipped him. People glorified him. People honored him. Now, again, if he was just a man, just a prophet, just, just like Isaiah or Jeremiah or one of those guys, and somebody started to worship them, what would they immediately tell them? Get up. <laughs> Get up quick, quick. No. You only worship who? You only worship God. He's the only one. In fact, when Satan came to Jesus and said, just bow down to me and I'll give you the world, what did he say? No. <laughs> we only bow down to who? God. And this man was bowing down to him. What did Jesus say to him? Oh, good job. <laughs> yes. In fact, the guy writing this book, John, also writes the book of Revelation. And in the book of Revelation, when Jesus comes to him, what does John do? He just lies flat, prostrate, laid down, face first in front of him because he knows he's standing before who? Yeah, and what does Jesus say? Does he say, get up quick, get up quick? No. He does that to an angel once, and the angel says, get up fast. <laughs> but Jesus is who? He's God. He is to be worshipped. I am to be worshipped, and only God can say that. Okay? What about John 13, 13? John chapter 13, verse 13. You call me master and who? Lord. And you say, well, for so I what? Am. He, and this, again, is another one. He is, I am Lord. And this Lord, now, in the Greek is Christios. And Christios can be for God the Father, God to be worshipped, but also it can be just for a master. Uh, somebody who's in charge of you, uh, uh, president or whatever, call them a lord or a lord over you. In this case, though, <laughs> he says, yeah, you call me master, but you also call me what? Lord. And as we saw in the Old Testament, when it says the Lord is coming, which Lord is it? Yahweh, right? And several times in John and the other books, they refer back to the Old Testament, to prophecies regarding the coming Christ. And in those, it says who's coming. The Lord is coming. And what's the word Lord there? Yahweh. So when he says, I am, you call me Master and Lord, and so I what? Am. I am Lord. I am who? God. Last one. John chapter 19. Now this isn't Jesus speaking here. This is those lousy good-for-nothings who had him hung on a cross. <laughs> this is during the trial. And we have here the Pharisees and the chief priests all coming to Pilate, who's the governor of the area for Rome. And they want Pilate to put Jesus to death. Why? What had he done? Well, let's see. John chapter 9, starting in verse 19, verse 5. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and purple robe, and Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Take you him and crucify him. For I find no fault in him. Had he, had he violated any Roman laws? Nope. The Jews answered him, We have a law, but by our law he ought to die, because he made himself to be who? The Son of God. In fact, you want to read Matthew. Matthew 26 goes through that. Jesus said, I am the Son of God. I am Lord Yahweh. I am God. And then they said, oh, we've got him now. <laughs> Let's put him to death. Blasphemy was the charge. Now, let me ask you something. If Jesus never claimed to be God, why would he let himself be put to death for being God? <laughs> that makes sense, does it? Did he claim to be God? Yes. I am God. So, now, is there any proof to this? We 
could say it, but is there any proof? Yes, yes. In fact, when he's sitting down to supper with his disciples, he says, I and the Father are one. Again, claiming equality with who? Equality with God, right? <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> he says, oh, j just you show us the Father and then we'll believe you. He says, wait a minute. You've seen, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. We're equal. Don't you get in this? In fact, if you don't believe me for what I say, believe me for the works that I have done. Because who else could stand up in the middle of a storm and say, stop? Except who? God? Who could take bread and feed 5,000 people? Who could take somebody born blind and make them to see? Who could walk up to a tomb of somebody dead four days and say, come on out, Lazarus, and let's have lunch? Who else could say that but God? Who else has the ability to lay down his life but also take it up again, other than who? God. So is there proof? No, let me ask something. And this is just John, though, right? John's the only one that talks about these things, right? No. No, the other Gospels do, too. And Paul talks about it. We don't have time to go through all of those. But the biggest one is actually in Matthew, where he says, I forgive your sins. How many times does he say that? Over and over and over again. And immediately everybody freaks out and says, nobody can forgive sins but God. You know his response? Uh-huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> Therefore I am who? I am God. Yes, throughout, throughout the books it says, so, so, so. <laughs> Why is this so important? Because why would we not believe? If Jesus said it, it was prophesied. Those who knew him best testified to it. He proved it by his actions. It, why would we not? Well, to me, it probably just comes down to pride. How many would like to think that maybe a person could be good enough? Right? We, we, we could be like Christ, right? We could be strong enough and good enough and holy enough, right? Jesus did it, so we can do it too, right? No, we can't. <laughs> That's the point. That's why we needed God to come, right? That's why God in the flesh had to come. He's the only one who could be tempted in every way which we are, yet not commit any sins. He's the only one who, without sin, could go to the cross and pay for our sins. He's the only one who could come and do what was necessary to love us enough to go through all of that for us. God is the only one. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with acknowledging that only God could save us? Only God could live the holy life? Only God can do these things? I'm okay with that because he's also the only one that could create all the universe. <laughs> he's also the only one that lives outside of time. He also can do so many things I can't. But we like to think, well, maybe a man could do it. But let me ask you something. If, if a man could do it, then should we be looking for another one? No. Because God only came how many times? He came once in Christ until he comes again in glory, right? But Christ is God who came and died for our sins. And the only conclusion you can come to, and this is a famous C.S. Lewis statement, either Jesus is a lunatic, just absolutely nuts, claiming to be God when he wasn't, and all of his disciples were a bunch of lunatics for believing him. <laughs> you, can, you can believe that. You can believe that he's a liar. He's not crazy. He knew what he was doing. He was claiming to be God because he just wanted to fool people and make all that money. <laughs> By the way, where did that take him? Took him to the cross, right? So I don't see where the benefit is. So he's a lunatic. He's a liar. Or maybe John's a liar. Maybe all these guys are liars, right? Maybe Isaiah was a liar. John the Baptist was a liar. Maybe all there are liars. Let me ask you something. If John lied about what Jesus said and lied about who he is, why would we believe John 3.16 that we can be saved? <laughs> Why would we believe anything? Why would we have any hope at all? Are they telling the truth? So he's either a lunatic, or they're a bunch of liars, or he's Lord. And what do I mean by Lord? Jehovah. Yahweh. 
God and creator of all things. Just as John says in John chapter 1, verse 1. The word was with God and the word was God. And nothing was made except that the word, Jesus Christ, made it. He's the creator of all things who emptied himself, came down from heaven, not like us, came down from heaven to live on this earth as one of us so that he could die for us. But he rose again, is back now in glory, and we're waiting for him to come again. That's who Jesus is. Do you believe that? How many are willing to say that? Jesus is God. Say it with me. Jesus is God. Right? Let's pray.